All right, folks. Welcome, welcome again to another episode of the Ujima Hour. Uh, I am Michael Tekken Strode, uh, coordinator of the Colonel Collaborative and um, a member of a cooperation, collaboration, study, and working group. Uh, the Colonel Collaborative is uh, Chicago's only uh, time based service and skills exchange, otherwise known as a time bank. Uh, and cooperation, collaboration, study, and working group is um, your very own, Chicago's very own, uh, space where we engage in the history and the context of, uh, of cooperative economic strategies in black communities in order that we can bring them into the contemporary moment and the contemporary space, build worker cooperatives that meet our social, cultural, and economic needs, uh, and ultimately build those regenerative, those solidarity economy spaces, solidarity economy structures uh, that we need to counter um, overall uh, capitalism. I mean, that, that's, 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 that's the end all be all. We'll, we'll be honest about that. You know, the ultimate goal is to, um, is to diffuse um, that particular economic system, which extracts, which harms, um, which is to our detriment, and, you know, bring something in that is restorative um, and, and, and life-giving, life-affirming. Uh, so to that end, uh, we are here on another special edition episode of the Ujima Hours. So if you were with us, uh, you know, um, uh, prior, you had an opportunity to uh, hear from Miliaku Nweze um, out of Atlanta, twice as good in cooperation on that, uh, on that initial day of Umoja. Um, and, you know, now we are here back on the day of Ujima, uh, collective work and responsibility, um, in order to have a conversation with Messiah Wade. Uh, but before we go there, um, we are just going to ground ourselves in, 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 in the principle a bit, right? You know, so... Um, Another reflection that, you know, I, I wanted to uh, share around this principle, you know, um, something that, that, again, I, I wrote all of these reflections back in 2013, and they were just me trying to um, always figure out how the principles apply to me and how the principles apply to the work that I am doing. Um, so at the time in 2013, um, that was, you know, at the sort of very inception of the Healthy Food Hub uh, and the work with Black Oak Center and the sort of ongoing uh, life relationship. Uh, with um, Baba Fred Carter and Mama Jafum Zarek Carter. Uh, and so, you know, I just want to share this reflection in that, in that spirit and in that essence as we go into another conversation around what our collective liberatory work should be, could be, and sort of what we mean when we talk about collective. Um, so all of those things being important, um, that reflection begins. Ujima, ex Ujima, Ujima eh expresses a shared immunity from the things which present an equal challenge to all community members. The only way to protect our progress and immunize ourselves against these community disruptions is to spread the work and discomfort around. Uh, organi organizations are made more fragile when work is not equitably shared as the absence of any one member can halt decision-making processes. These single points of failure present transitional challenges as there's no one truly equipped to assume the mantle when the founding visionary passes. Therefore, we should do our best to never be indispensable members of the team. Uh, our responsibility, if we have eyes on the success of the organization, institution, community, is to find someone who would be understudied onto our position, who will confidently assume the role in our absence, uh, to recognize ourselves as interchangeable parts in an entire system. Uh, Ujima is an extension of Umoja in that we recognize our work and future to be deeply linked with the actions of those around us, and therefore, we seek no personal glory in the matter of nation building. Our responsibility is to the greater cultural and communal glory, which inspires even um, inspires our most fervent enthusiasm. Ujima is about the allocation of our mental and physical resources in the most strategic manner uh, so that we extract the highest utility uh, from their placement. Therefore, children are an apex example of our adherence to Ujima as for it is our investment in their human development, which affords us the resources to continue the work we have initiated in our life that will live beyond us. Uh, teach the children that they, that they have the responsibility to carry your name uh, through their actions for the world. Uh, for they are the most, they are the most tangible, tangible expression of your approach to the work of restructuring the world. Um, and there were probably uh, several things. In fact, you know, I was freestyling a, a little bit there because there are several things that I would change. I am not the same person in 2013. Uh, that I was in 2013 and 2020, uh, but you know we 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 have the opportunity to evolve. We have the opportunity to grow, and hopefully, you know, um, part of that collective work that we are doing today is uh, rooting ourselves in relationship with the people that we organize alongside, rooting ourselves in relationship more deeply with the people that we are um, that we are building a new world with. That we are building, you know. Um, whatever our definition of community, whatever our framing is for community, that we are building community with, 
um, rooting ourselves in relationship with those those folks and and sharing that collective work to become new people on the other side of those relationships. Uh, and so, you know, hopefully that is a part, that is a fraction, that is a smidgen of our collective work and responsibility. And, you know, it, it is it is certainly something that I am reflecting on today. And, you know, I, I hope that, you know, is drawn out in this uh, conversation that we're going to have. So we we had the opportunity to speak uh, back in June with Lasaya Wade of Brave Space Alliance, um, you know, which is, uh, you know, Chicago's uh, black led, trans led uh, community organization, community stalwart, you know, center um, and institute, you know, becoming, fast becoming the in, an institution of, of in itself. And so um, we are looking forward to what Brave Space Alliance has in store for 2021. Um, so we, we were back in June, we were um, just right on the other end of the Floyd rebellions. And, you know, certainly, you know, a couple of a few months into COVID. Um, and, and now we are further at the end of the year, um, transitioning into a new year as we are still still ever evolving, still becoming new people on the other side of pandemic and, you know, ongoing epidemic of police violence. Um, and so we, we, we look forward to really hearing what uh, Lasaya has to say about the work of Brave Space Alliance uh, going forward in 2021. And also, um, you know, what, what we should be sharing, what we should be grounding ourselves in as far as our collective work and responsibility. Uh, and with that, I bring you Lasaya Wade. Welcome. Hello, hello. Yes. So, so how does this um, end of twenty twenty find you um, so far? You, you mentioned you're in a relaxation moment now. I'm in a relaxation moment, as relaxed as I could possibly be. But we're still in a midst of a pandemic, um, so I still have to be very vigilant. As we all know, I have a well, most do know that I have a four month old, so I am more vigilant than most. Um, even when someone is closer than five feet, I'm like, back up, back up, what's going on? So, yeah, I think um, I'm doing my best to what we can and finding better ways to keep us safe in these particular moments at the end of this year. Absolutely. And, you know, we have a, we have a, a guest, a, a special guest behind our guest. So, you know, wonderful voices, you know, trickling in. We appreciate that. Um, you know, small note. So how has, how has this, this, parenthood, you know, this evolutionary space of parenthood transformed you and transformed your approach to the work? I think the generation, uh, my generation and generation that's coming up from behind are challenging ourselves to um, grow humans with autonomy of themselves and also liberated minds. Uh, and which I'm excited to do. I, my mother was like, you are literally growing a liberated mind um, and someone that will have a complete different view on life than most. So it made, it made me cry, touch me in a particular manner, but this is what the work looks like. And I'm excited to take that on, take on that challenge. So um, yeah, I just think it's important um, that we acknowledge the generation that's coming from behind. Like we, we've been badasses in our generation, right? And the generation behind me is is a whole different breed of badasses. So I can only imagine um, the generations that come up behind them. And so when we spoke in June, um, Break Space Alliance was in the midst of, you know, transforming, you know, transforming potentially as an organization, um, expanding some of the, the ways that it was engaging and, and, and serving sort of broader constituencies and, you know, in spaces and community, um, you know, we're, we're some months on from that, you know, I, I know that, you know, as a, as a fellow co-tenant of the former Floods Hall and, you know, now the Brave Space Alliance space, um, you know, that there, there have been some evolutions there even, um, in terms of the building that you occupy. So, you know, what, what does the work look like, uh, now versus what it was looking like then? It's still heavy. Um, and it's and it's and it's heavier than it was. Um, I think as we grow, we see the the need um, is bigger than the people that we were serving. Um, also, we're we're noticing the space is a wonderful space is running being renovated right now, but also as a space that we 
are want, we were wanting community to come in, right? We were wanting community to come into the space and use the space. What we created the space for is for people to be able to be themselves in the space, right? Um, so then and now is the community cannot come into space, right? Because of COVID. Um, people have to stay home and we have figured out how to serve them from home until everyone's able to commune together. Um, and we don't know when, when that comes into play, right? Um, when will people be able to commune? Like, we will never be able to commune like we used to, but how can we come together and commune in the future? How will that change, right? Um, so, yeah, I think that comes into play in this situation um, around the space. But also, it's just exciting to say um, that Brave Space, the space will never be taken away from our community ever again. And um, and so you know, there's there's some growth. Um, so there's there's both there's organizational growth um, in a sort of you know non literal way, non literal way. But there's also the sort of you know there's the financial growth there. Um, I know that there are several organizations that small scrappy grassroots, you know, I mean, pulling together what they got to pull together that have experienced this this influx and have had to kind of deal with the adaptive challenge, you know, how, how are you grappling with that? So we went from a $300,000 organization to a $2.5 million organization because it's fully grassroots. Everyone that donates is from the ground and people continue to donate. And we're seeing that the programs uh, that we have are being able to be fully funded now in a particular manner. So we're able to feed 2,000 people a week in our pantry. We're able to help uh, 150 people every month in, our mutual, in each mutual aid group. Um, we're able to reach out to people when, they're need, when they need money and give them money in, in, in a time of need with our trans relief fund where people donate. And the more people donate, the more people, more people that we can serve and continue to serve because we're, we're starting to reach that. We're not just serving trans and not conforming people, we're serving the LGBT population within the Chicago land, explicitly black and brown bodies. So um, the influx is an amazing thing and also allows people to continue to keep their jobs in this particular climate, right? Um, to continue to serve the people that needs to be served. And what does it look like to kind of um, bring on new team members or to kind of, you know, um, resource that new, those those new opportunities, you know, what what, what does it look like to kind of begin building out, you know, um, staff and team? Did you already have folks at the ready and you were like, yo, you know, now we can actually pay for your time. You know, what 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 does that uh, look like? <laughs> so um, we're now, we, we've had a team of, um, we started off with four, now we went to nine, and now we're about to go into 15, a team of 15. And I think it's like important to pay people what they're worth, mm -hmm. um, regardless of what, what it looks like and for us i think it's important even for an ed like myself right i don't get paid as much as a regular ed regular eds get hundreds a hundred thousand plus for me to be able to um expand my team the way i've been expanding it i only make sixty thousand a year and it allows me to be able to hire other people to do their jobs the way that they need to be done right um i've noticed that um as of right now, I don't need a hundred thousand. I just think it's important that I can pay another person forty thousand dollars a year to be able to live through this particular climate and also thrive um, during this particular climate without worry. Um, and also that extra money we can pay for insurance for people as well. So I think it's just important and imperative to have more people on to do the work that we have been wanting to do. Mm -hmm. And when we were speaking last time. Um, you know your 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 voice is as prominent as ever as as um, with ensuring that folks recognize the marginal within the marginal and, and recognize the folks that you know um, that that are being ignored. Um, are you feeling like that that uh, I mean you know you are you feeling like it's it's resonating like I mean it's resonating in a different way. Is is it is it still not landing in the way that you want it to land, or is it is there something moving? 
I think right now people are noticing that small groups, small organizations have been doing the work where big organizations have failed. Um, also, we are still dealing with the we still deal with oppressed people, right? So regardless of what it looks like and how we push out the resources, oppressed people are going to still continue to give this pushback that we're not doing enough, right? Um, so regardless of what it looks like, we're still pushing to make sure oppressed people understand, like, we're doing as much as we possibly can. Um, we're doing as much as we can to get the resources to you and also help other people because you are not the center of the community. There is more than just one of you, right? And we have to realize that we cannot center ourselves in these particular moments. We have to be able to center everyone in these moments. Mm -hmm. And so um, when you think about the, the way that the organization is shaping up now and um, the values that you all are collectively bringing to it, what do you feel like is, you know, I, I, I know that um, that there are some ways um, in terms of the, the, that that we can that we can speak to the grant community grantor community that we can speak to sort of these other nonprofits that have been here um, that are able to shift their organizational culture. I'm just wondering, what do you think is the sort of organizational culture and or economy that you feel like you are creating with the, the blueprint that you're building out within the organization now? No, that's a big question. My fault. <laughs> question i think it's um it's hard to answer that yes. right um because i don't want to demonize everyone else's work culture mm -hmm. all i can do is create a culture where i see myself and i see people that love and want to have liberation instead of capitalism in the space um instead of wanting to more worry about lining their own pockets but lining the community pockets of survival um and pushing past survival or pushing past the community to survive but pushing them to thrive and get out of a slump of wanting to be given resources instead of fighting for the resources um so i i i i, I am proud of my team that has not only held we held we hold each other accountable um, but also hold not only ourselves accountable, but the community around us accountable. Oh, you just muted yourself. <laughs> Can you hear me? Absolutely. Perfect. So I, I think it's, I think it's imperative in this particular moment that we, we think about the processes of pushing people instead of just surviving and pushing them to thrive and figure out different methods of thriving in this moment. Um, one of the things that I've, I've noted um, came up, you know, with the, with Brave Space on social media today is that they're posting about Ishe and, you know, and, and um, some other community members in the trans community that have been lives lost. Um, so I'm wondering, are there sort of both names and stories or, you know, just, you know, thoughts that you want to evoke around uh, this, this issue at the moment? Um, I think in this moment, um, we need to realize that this work is just not of self. I think I want to, I want to continue to push like, this work is not of self in this particular moment um, because how important it is that we center the lives that we have lost and not the center of the lives that are still here in this particular moment, right? Um, it's, it's, it's hard to say is because everyone right now is in need um, and I should be the one that's in the front line because of such or I should be in the front in the front lines because of such, but also realizing that everyone should be in the front line because of the needs that they are needing. But in this moment, as we we have literally lost a person due to violence, um, we want to bombard people that are trying to bury this particular person or particular people into what about me? Um, well, what about you? Um, we know that you need at this moment, but also are we supposed to leave this particular child in the street of 
not being buried uh, as a human that they're supposed to be treated as such. So um, I just think, again, uh, we have to center everyone and not ourselves. And, and so now um, just landing on this sort of principle around today, you know, um, Ujima, collective work and responsibility, um, there is what's happening within Brave Space and there's sort of what's the broader work, you know, of, of all of us collectively together. Um, what are your thoughts on both uh, around how you may personally gravitate around this notion of collective work and responsibility and how you think that weighs with, with uh, the larger collective? <sighs> Um, everyone's hungry. <laughs> everyone. I, I just want to, like, to be blunt, everyone is literally hungry. Everyone is fighting for crumbs. Everyone is reaching out to figure out what it looks like, who got the best resources, who can, who can switch out resources, who can get this before that person. And it's, it's, it's scrounge mode right now. Um, as a scrounge mode, we, we, we need to learn to breathe. Um, I think the best for me is I have to literally sit back sometimes and be like, it's okay to breathe. It's okay to say, okay, we didn't get that, so let's try something else. Um, we didn't get that, so let's try this. Um, we didn't figure that out, so therefore we have to scratch that to see if we can, we can maneuver some of these resources over here to see if we can help people over there. Um, but also, what does it look like for me to be um, helping Project Vita or helping BLM or um, helping Asada's daughters in a particular manner so they can get their resources and how can we exchange particular resources? Um, and also, <laughs> he has so much to say. Yes. Uh, but also, we have to realize, like, Sometimes you know other other collectives and organizations don't want to work with each other. They just want to be able to do what they want to do when they're wanting to do it, and that's okay. Um, sometimes you have to sit and wait for someone to ask you for help. Hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, are there are there other elements of Brave Space's current work that you want to highlight? That you want to draw attention to? That you you want to root us in? Um. Hmm. I don't think so at this moment. I think to continue to support DSA sustainability, to continue to be able to feed the people that we have been feeding, we have fed over 300,000 people throughout this pandemic and continue to serve people on the ground. And we're proud of that particular type of work and especially and explicitly um, on the south and west side where people live in food deserts or too afraid to go outside of their home, which is in a four block or even a block radius to get food. Um, so yeah, I just think um, that's, that's the most important work for myself. Okay, okay. And have you all already done your strategic planning or mapping for 2021? Do you know, you, you know what the sort of horizon looks like over there for you all? Um, we don't. <laughs> uh, I don't think no one does. <laughs> Um, I think it's important that we know, like, we are coming out of four years of Trump. We are coming into a, a, a pandemic that the virus is mutating. We are um, coming into a point that people are afraid to leave their homes. We are also coming to a point that people have high anxiety to even see other people. Um, so we don't know what might happen next year. But we do know one thing that we will continue to serve the people that we have been serving and we will continue to feed the people that we need to be feeding. Uh, we will continue to be on the ground with organizers when they need us. We will continue to be in people's faces to change laws. We know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we, that's something we do know. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and this is maybe a, a sort of on the spot, a personality question, right? You know, there's, um, you talked about being a master strategist before, you know, it's like you had chess moves going on in your head. I don't know, is there is there a way that you would define your sort of chess move or your chess piece at this current moment? No, um, a lot of people don't know how I'm thinking. Even my partner looks like, what the hell are you with that? And But my partner has learned to allow me to sit and think and to strategize in my mind, to to play the chest in my mind 
and to then come to the table and say, okay, this is the plan. And then he'll be like, okay, this is what I was thinking. How can we maneuver that way? Um, and it splits the person that's dyslexic, right? It takes me a second to really fully plan it. But when I plan it, it's planned. Um, but also to understand, like, in this moment, um, I'm the queen piece and all this, all this, what's only in my way are the small pawns and I'm ready to knock them out. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And um, and how how would you like, uh, you know, I, I recognize that, you know, you you in the vacation space, you tell me if you want to extend this longer or, you know, we can cap it. But, um, you know, how would you like this 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 interview to land? You know, um, in terms of you well, actually, you know, I'll ask this one this other question before I, I get to that. Um, this question is really about um, making sure that we, uh, you know, and I ask this question of Miliaku too, because Miliaku classifies themselves as neurodivergent, and we were talking about accessibility, you know, in spaces. Um, so, are there things that we need to make sure that we are paying attention to um, to ensure that spaces are fully, deeply, richly accessible? Hmm. I tell people if you don't see what you have not spoken about at the table that you are sitting at, then therefore your work is not complete. Okay. That's as simple as I can get. If you're talking about uh, uh, trans people, but trans people aren't with you exchanging power, then therefore you don't need to be talking about it. If you're talking about uh, disabled people, but di you're the only disabled person, but other disabled people are not at the table, then therefore you don't need to be talking about it. Um, if you're talking about blackness and you're a white person, you don't need to be talking about it um, because the black person can speak for themselves and so on and so on and so forth because we can be intersectional beings, but also you need to find someone that is living in the moments of, oh, I am disabled. Like this is this is what's, what's stopping me from getting jobs. This is what's stopping me from being able to go to work. This is what's stopping me from able to get groceries at work. And I need to talk about that. So um, we need to look at the tables that we're sitting at and allow them people to come and sit at the tables that we have created for ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so now call to action, landing. Um, what do you need? What's the collective work and responsibility you need people to take on, whether it's related to Brave Space or anything else? You know, how would you call us to, to action? I uh, won't say to arms, you know, that's military, you post-military. <laughs> My action for everyone is, it's, it's, and this is for my black and brown people, breathe. It's okay to breathe. And it's okay to say no. And it's okay to walk around and say, that's just not for me. I think we as black and brown people have been, have been, been pushed into this superhero mode where we should not have been pushed into. Um, some of this shit, white people have to clean up. It's not my job to clean it up. Um, some of this shit that they have to fall in their own ditch to feel exactly what we have been feeling for 450 to 500 years um, in this in these things. Um, so yeah, I just want our people to understand it's okay to breathe. It's okay to say that I am not a superwoman or a superman or a superhero in this moment. And it's okay to say no. Um, and that's my action. I think even the smallest no, uh, even the smallest person, the smallest thing to walk away from and say, I will get to that tomorrow, um, will allow us to be able to extend our lives and this, to extend our peacefulness and joy too. Yeah, I'm remind, reminded at the beginning of the, the outset of the pandemic, you know, falling into this, you know, it's a light depression, you know, I mean, there was, you know, varying waves of it, right? Um, because this, these scrappy grassroots efforts with which I had been working could not save all of the people who were being dropped by capitalism, <laughs> you know, um, which, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, whatever. Same with, I, I deal with a marginalized, within a marginalized, within a marginalized community of people where if I drop the ball on one person, then therefore I am deemed as the op. I'm deemed as the person that should has not shouldn't should not be at the at the whim. But also I have to remember um Martin Luther King's 
not Martin Luther King, but Malcolm X words, is like we are in the midst of a war. There's some people that we might we might lose as we go down this particular lane. So um I'm okay with that. I'm okay because I know the num the the number what's the what's the, I'm trying to say? Uh the number outweigh the one. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay with that. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, you know. Um and and so uh there we land. Are there other things that you wanna close with, you know, just before we before we break out, you know, are there other things you want folks to know about this day of Ujima or, you know, other things about this close of the year? Mm-hmm. Just take it easy on yourself. We don't know how long we're going to be in this. Yeah. Just take it easy on yourself. We don't know how long we're going to be on this. We don't know how much stupidity that's going to be on the end of the other side of the spectrum just because we got another white man into office that might be less of, less racist than the, the first white man that we had in office. And the very first one that we had as president does not mean that we still have to deal with the same shit. So be easy on yourself. That's it. Be easy on yourself, breathe, and be sure to check out the work of Brave Space Alliance. Um, side, small sidebar, the interview with the Obama, you know, foundation. How'd you, how'd you feel about that? How'd you feel that it came out? Which I, interview? I, and that's you make no news. You know, there was a, they made, they did a, posted an interview about mutual admiration and just about some of the work of Brave Space Alliance. So I don't know, you know. I appreciate um I appreciate it. I appreciate they continue to um, help grassroots um, organizers and collectives uh, get get their, their their stuff out there, reaching other people. Um, as long as we still hold them to the fire of what their mishaps is, um, what they have done to community here in Chicago, I am okay with them um, using their platform and power to um level works of black and brown people throughout chicago um i think it's inter- interchangeable um work that we have to do is to hold each other accountable into what we're doing um and explicitly now um if you can or cannot or try not to leave people behind there are some people that are wanting to change and there are some people that don't know how to change within the society and the system that we live in so they're learning as they go to change particular aspects and particular methods. And I see that with um, big organizations um, like the Obama Foundation. Okay, okay, all right. So that, that's, that's an excellent landing space. You know, we, we, I encourage you all to check out, you know, Obama.org and just, you know, look at that interview. You know, there, there's, there's always ways that we can kind of s- situate radical ideas in the context of things that are more mainstream, you know. <laughs> And if you read the article, it tells you in the article, this system is fucked. And we completely do a rehaul on this system or completely create something different. And they did not change my words. Um, and I asked them not to change my words. And I think that was the most Im- important piece for myself and surprising piece. And especially when they they uplift capitalism in this country in a particular manner, um, and they still been able to put that in their article. Yes, absolutely. You know, well, you know that that that's what we do. We introduce those disruptive ideas. We uh, force folks to you know keep those disruptive ideas in there. You know, what if they even if they throw them alongside you know whatever else they're they're pu- pu- pushing. But you know, this is uh, this is the work. This is the collective work. This is the collective responsibility to continue to be disruptors um, in all spaces and in all contexts. And we appreciate the disruption, the disruptive capacity, the disruptive power, the disruptive personality of uh, Lysia Wade. So thank you very much for you know a, a, a checking in with us, giving us the feedback on the work of BSA. And we look forward to you know seeing everything else that develops uh, from, from this work. And I look forward to collaborating with you so in person. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm always willing here and working with you. It has always been amazing. And I just want people to remind my, remember, fuck them. And we still here. We still here. <laughs> All right. Be well now. Have, have a great, great rest of your vacation now. You as well. Thank you. <laughs>
All right, folks, uh, that was today's uh, briefer episode of the Ujima Hour, uh, this check-in with Isaiah Wade of Brave Space Alliance. Be sure to check out the Brave Space Alliance website, bravespacealliance.org. Um, so, you know, make sure you go there to www.bravespacealliance.org um, to check out the work of uh, Lasaya. Um, somewhere on that Brave Space Facebook page, you can find a link to that Obama article. You know, perhaps I'll post it in the comments before I leave. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I encourage you all to uh, be be disruptors um, in this collective work and this collective responsibility that we have. Um, do not be single points of failure. Um, do not, you know, um, um, be, be someone who is holding so much work that if you leave, the entire institutional infrastructure falls apart. Um, that is not collective work and responsibility. That is not shared work. That is not principled mutual aid. Um, that is none of that. Um, we have to share the immunity. We have to share the, um, the, the pain, the discomfort. We have to spread the work around. Um, and then we have to share the joy. Uh, because all of those things are part of that collective work and responsibility that we are rooting ourselves in on this day and every other. And so I look forward to doing some more of that collective work and collective responsibility with you all come 2021. Uh, make sure that you check out um, in January, January 10th, um, uh, Cooperation, Collaboration, Study, and Working Group will be back with our public session, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, so be sure that you check out the Cooperation, Collaboration, Study, and Working Group Facebook page. Um, for more info, um, if you're not subscribed to our mailing list, uh, you know, you can find that information on the Facebook page. Um, and yeah, you know, check into that mailing list. Be there for the public session on, um, on, on January 10th. Um, we're closing out Freedom Farmers um, by Dr. Monica White. And, and you know, really, a really exceptional text. Um, and, and actually, I was reading, a, a, you know, a post earlier from... Um, from Malik Yakini, you know, where he was talking about Ujima and just saying he's not going to any more black meetings. Um, so you, you all, if you're not following Malik Yakini, you should probably follow him and figure out why he's not going to no more black meetings. Essentially, we need to be in spaces where work is being done. And if it's not being done in those spaces, we need to vacate quickly and go find some more important work to do. Um, with that, I will leave you all uh, at the end, at the tail end of this broadcast. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, today, and um, tune in tomorrow. Um, it's going to be Deidre Somerville, and I hope um, that we'll be able to get Yvette Holtz on um, to talk about uh, Isusu. Um, so, you know, the, the uh, rotating, um, rotating Savings and Credit Associations, um, RASCAs. Uh, so we'll, we'll be talking about Susus. We'll be talking about uh, money pooling um, from a principled, a principled, culturally rooted, culturally relevant, uh, affirmed, um, you know, African-centered perspective, um, money pooling, um, not, not, not those things that are on YouTube, you know, telling you to like circle up in a loom and a flower and things like that. This is really about how we culturally get together and, and, and cooper cooperate um, within our sort of local economies, um, pool money together um, for, for the purpose of building communities um, both within our, around these particular resources but also outside and beyond these resources. So yeah, that's what's coming up tomorrow. Um, so be here again at 3 p.m. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's what it will be. <laughs> but you can first certainly find all of that on the Cold Nut Collaborative Facebook page. Um, until then, y'all, um, I look forward to seeing you all later. Peace. <laughs>